much. I want to bring in Michelle Meyer for some more reaction. She's a senior economist for Barclays Capital. And Michelle, uh, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, uh, we did see uh, some stronger than expected numbers on retail sales, but also jobless claims. I mean, which one is more surprising to you right now? I mean, jobless, we know, uh, we know that trend is going down at this point. I'm encouraged by the jobless claims numbers. I think that's a very encouraging sign. It shows that we're going to see a further slowdown in the pace of job cuts. Um, for continuing jobless claims, the fact that they're remaining high means that the unemployment rate is likely to continue to rise. But that's to be expected since the unemployment rate does lag the business cycle. So that leading indicator, which is initial jobless claims, the fact that it's falling steadily means the economy, uh, the economic recession is slowing. Could it actually perhaps be slowing, given the fact that we've seen this bigger than expected drop? I don't want to make too much out of one week's number, uh, but uh, does it perhaps tell you that the recession may be slowing down a bit uh, quicker than some might expect? I think that's a good point that you don't want to make too much out of one week number, but if you look at the four week moving average, that's also steadily coming down um, from the, the peak that was reached in March. So um, yeah, I do take some comfort by these numbers. Um, I think that the economy will emerge out of recession in the second half of the year. Um, but no, we're not quite out of the woods yet. It's still a high initial jobless claims number. Okay. The economy is still weak. And I would like to point out to our viewers and to you as well, Michelle, that the insured unemployment rate, which is a <laughs> uh, tracks the national unemployment rate quite well, as, as you just said, up to 5.1%. Again, a new uh, high for the cycle. Retail sales, the consumer, what is a the threat there? If people keep losing their jobs, does confidence fall again? Is that something else that could thwart an incipient recovery? Uh, consumer confidence uh, has improved pretty substantially. Uh, if you look at the latest conference board survey, expectations component jumped higher. So I think the fact that consumers are feeling a little bit less nervous about their personal finances over the next 6 to 12 months is a good sign. Um, and it means that they'll likely continue to slowly increase spending, maybe initially on you know, the necessities, but slowly move over to more discretionary items as well. And uh, Let's go. go ahead, Betty. Sorry. Uh, uh, Michelle, I just wanted to jump in because, um, you know, in terms of retail sales and consumer spending, I mean, how much of, of any of this is uh, related at all to the fiscal stimulus that we're seeing? I think that's an excellent point. Uh, consumers were given a big boost from this fiscal stimulus. If you look at real disposable income, it actually jumped higher over the past two quarters. Um, there's a few factors. First, uh, taxes were lower, so there's a smaller tax burden due to the fiscal stimulus change. In addition, they've received a lot of transfer receipts, um, greater unemployment insurance. Uh, in May, we'll be getting, we got the so Social Security supplement payment. Um, so that is an important point where consumers right now do have greater income um, and greater purchasing power because of the fiscal stimulus. But that should fade. And in Q3, we actually think we'll see a decline in disposable income. About uh, the bond market, because this rise in yields, which has been so swift, the 10-year note yield almost up to about 4% now, uh, this is pushing mortgage rates higher. Even the optimists on the economy are concerned that this could be, this could be the fly in the ointment. This could be the stumbling block that we hadn't seen just a couple of months ago. The rise in yields is by absolutely is concerning. Um, the fact that mortgage rates are now 100 basis points higher than they were at, at the bottom when the Fed um, and announced their asset buying program is, is obviously very concerning. But here's the offset. Um, consumers have received relief elsewhere, right? So credit has become a little bit more available. Um, the fact that confidence has improved, the fact that they feel like maybe the labor market is starting to look better, they have a little bit more jobs security, that can probably offset some of the burden from higher interest rates and um, diminish some of the potential downside to home sales. Right. And Michelle, I mean, that's a good point that Kathleen was talking about, because uh, I want to ask you, I mean, even if uh, you do see uh, jobless numbers come down and you do see retail sales rebound, I mean, does much of that matter uh, when you still have home prices depressed? It does matter. You can absolutely see um, the economy come out of recession even when you have home prices continuing to fall. Home prices are pretty sticky, so they, they, they're going to, in our review, continue to fall even when you have um, you know, steady growth, above potential growth. Um, the fact that home prices are continuing to fall is certainly a burden on consumers. Consumers have seen a massive wealth destruction. So it will continue to be a headwind for consumers and keep spending at a lower profile than they might right. have seen otherwise. Uh, but I do think that you can have, you can have economic growth. Okay.
All right, Michelle, I'm sorry. We're just coming up against a commercial break, so we sure. are running out of time. But thanks so much, Michelle Meyer of Barclays Capital.